Our greetings, my friend. Pray that I meet again with you all. Hebrew Israelites, feed yourself. This is our greenhouse here, and I'm here this morning uh, because it will get extremely hot in here. Usually, midday is around 124 degrees. Let me say that this is vital to the communal concept of greenhouse. We have actually three and all. We have a huge one that we can grow everything in it. I mean, it, it's enough to feed an army. And we're in the process of remodeling that or taking care of that. Next year you'll see that, all right? What I have here, if you can see, these are, I, I would advise anyone that want to grow and love to do things individually, these are called earth boxes. You see that? It's called the earth box. You can get the large one or the juniors. We've had these boxes about uh, at least 18 years. These right here, I would say 15 years. And they grow exceptionally well. Let me show you what, what, what comes with it. You water this, you don't have to water it. You put water in the reservoir. And the, this is some of the setup that goes with it. And you fill the water in the reservoir. And then you don't have to water that. Uh, it gets, it's the covering that goes with it. They also send you the organic fertilizer and everything. Only thing you do is plant. They're around, when I purchased these, these were $25 a piece. And that was a large amount of money for us. And now they run between $61 to $100. But if you can spare the finance, you know, get you about five of these, it would be well worth the investment to get these, uh, these earth boxes, and they, and they do work, believe me, they work. You can water them, let them be, and they will give you a continuous flow of product. I've been preparing the raised bed. Is it working? Mm -hmm. The raised beds here, and uh, what I have here, let me show you. What I have here, I have some, and these raised beds here, this is this is a product we have purchased from around here. This is what we call a mushroom compost. I put that down, but let me show you the layers of this. See, that's chicken, a turkey litter here, this here. And beneath that, this is from this is from our compost pile here. This here. This is our compost soil here. So a mixture of all it's not simply going to grow because we think we have the right adamant uh, uh, for the soil, you got to have, you know, the phosphorus, the phosphate, the nitrogen, all of that must be balanced. That's what makes things grow. It must be balanced in the fertilizer. You have to fertilize things. In this greenhouse, we will grow cucumbers, tomatoes, that will last us during the season, uh, the winter time. And so what I, I want to do this week is began to seed my plants, and I have them for the greenhouse. I could get my seeds, I got these seeds, some of them, from territorial seeds. They're genuine organic. Uh, I'm not advertising them, but uh, I do buy a uh, purchase from territorial seed. And there are certain kinds of seeds that will simply grow in the greenhouse. And so I have seeds that will do cucumbers, will do tomatoes here in this bed here. You notice this, this is where we start our seeds during the uh, winter. Our growing lights and everything is intact. We can put 3,000 seeds just under that. It may not look like it. We can put 3,000 seeds under that to grow. And uh, so they give us room that when the winter start, we gr we'll grow herbs and things like that in these bins here. We'll grow some tomatoes here in these this year. And this will be tomatoes here, all right? And then what we will do on this side right here is grow cucumbers and trellis them up. Put us a panel here and trellis everything up where we can eat and keep it all trellis here. We can grow cucumbers here and gives us space. This is a small greenhouse. We built this, this used to be the basketball court. If you notice the floor is, is black top, it's asphalt. And this where the little children, the young ones would come play basketball. Uh, and so after, uh, after the diminishing of populace here, we turned this into a greenhouse. We built this, uh, I would say, I would say 10 years ago, I built this. And it has, uh, it has proven to be well. 
Let me show us something, my friends. This is something I've never tried this medium here. I've never tried these micro mats. This is my first time, nor this. But this is what we will see, the tomatoes and everything in here and grow the things for the greenhouse. And also we use these. I like the compost, cow compost, uh, uh, seed starters, because it gives the plant, you know, if you can't get it out at your earliest convenience, it gives the plant time to expand. And it will grow quite well in that. And also... What we have here is not only that, but we have, and I'll plant all this tomorrow. You, uh, one person asked, I, I saw you using Epsom salt. Well, I do use Epsom salt because Epsom salt has many of the vital uh, irons and magnesium and things. Just sprinkle a little bit, just like this. You don't have to use much, just over the plants. Or you can dilute this with water and spray your plant. So uh, it will help, believe me. And then... You know, the, the diatomaceous earth, you use that for ants and things of that nature. And we do have the ants here, but we do use a stronger uh, ant killer for, for the perimeter of things. We don't use that on plants or anything, but this is diatomaceous earth. I'm quite sure you all know about that. And different, different fertilizers we use. So this is set to go for the, uh, for the, uh, for, for the fall garden here. These pots right here are purely compost pots. <clears throat> if you want to grow tomatoes in these, you can grow that and peppers or whatever. You can sit them down in here. But this box, this earth box, once you get it all squared away, <clears throat> what you do, they send you a package of fertilizer and lime, everything you need. And you make a ridge across the front. You put that in. You put the whole package in. This will take two plants. It depends. It will take more than that. But this will take two cucumber plants. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen plants. You can't. That's more than enough. And you get them to grow at intervals that they're producing at all time. So you put the fertilizer here, and that's all you need. But we will spray. Uh, some of our organic fertilizer and everything on there to assist, to help keep everything healthy. And here you see the same composition here on this raised bed here, as you see here. And uh, we will grow things like um, lettuce and things of that nature here. You don't need that many for our group. We can grow 25, 40 at a time and then start another batch. And the same thing over here, we can plant carries between the uh, uh between the um uh, the tomatoes because carrots and tomatoes they grow now look at some of the stuff we use here a lot of things you can purchase like this blood meal here <clears throat> that is rich in nitrogen this is this is all organic <clears throat> see organic choice you can get this at lowe's or home depot you don't have to go online to order this kind of stuff but 99 percent of this stuff comes from uh, uh, from online. I order from different places. I try things, uh, uh, stuff like this, like the tomato food and things of that nature. And things like this, you see the high content of things like this. <clears throat> 620, you need the phosphate uh, in, in your planting. You don't need as much nitrogen. And things like boron, we have to order this offline. Boron makes the plant sweet and help with many essentials. So you have to you have to utilize things that will work in your area. And you all will ask me questions of what about this and that. Well, your climate and all has to do, like this year, our tomatoes did not do as well as they should have. And so that makes me research things, grow, uh, go into, uh, into the encyclopedia of organic growing and look at different approaches, especially because we're in this greenhouse, it's 81 degrees already, and it's only 802. Two past 8 a.m. this morning. We have extremely humid weather. And things like tomatoes and things like that don't do well in that. And there are things that do do well. And so you're going to have to grow a blend of organic heirloom seeds and also organic hybrid. Let nobody kid you. These silly little boys that will try to tell you about growing and what you to do, what to do, have never grown even started a tomato seed in, in a little pot like that. They know everything, but they never experience anything. 
And so you're going to have to have the mediums. And this right here, let me show you this. I want to come around this way. Let me show you what I have here. <clears throat> and I want to show you some of the things. You see, that's a generate, that's a water pump right there. That water pump will supply water for, uh, for, you can use that pump for 100 acres of one garden. It will drip irrigate. And not only that, that's go, that will be used for our fire fire station. That if some if there's a fire or anything, we can, we can expedite things and put it out quickly. We have everything. But look at this. This is what they call, not what they call, this is coconut shell. Coconut. This is, this is a tremendous absorber of water. You don't need a lot. Now don't just pack it. You don't want plants to be, to be over inundated with water because they will begin to rot. With just a little bit of this in your mixture that you're going to see within plant, it does wonders. It retains the water. And some of you all that are up in age that sometimes you don't feel like getting out to water. If you go with something like these, these little earth boxes, I'm telling you, they are, they are wonderful. They are wonderful. And in your area, you can buy organic material. And you don't write or ask me where to get this stuff from because wherever you live, you can get that. And not only that, let me show you one of the most, this is a tremendous nitrogen product here. I'll show you this. I'm getting ready. I'll turn this in. I just won't grow in this, but I'll mix the three together and grow in all of this, the tomatoes, and give them about at least four foot apart. It's not about how many you grow, it's the quality. Always think about quality. And you give them space to grow, all right? Well, let me show you a wonderful nitrogen product that our Ach is putting some on the corn right now. Our corn is beautiful. Getting ready for tabernacle, so we have a corn boil with sausages and things like that. But look at this. This is Malagoy granite. This here comes from, this is a tremendous slow release nitrogen. And this worked tremendously well on collard greens and cabbages. They, they, they require nitrogen. And you can go to places, I get this from Lowe's for $12 a bag. That's what it costs. Well, people say, well, you don't have to spend money. Well, you grow into a three little plants. You can, or, or, or five or six plants. That's a different ball game where we grow thousands of plants, all right? We don't grow two or three or 100. We grow thousands, all right? It's a vast difference, my friend. And this, I use this, this organic potting mix right here. <clears throat> you get this at Lowe's. A Home Depot, I think a bag at Lowe's about $8 a bag. And you want to, in the earth boxes, you don't want to use this composition of soil I have here. You've got to use something like this with dolomite and things like that in that. And of course, we have heaters and things to keep this warm. As long as you keep the temperature around 50 degrees during the winter, everything will do well. It will do extremely well. And so you can buy this right here, this mellow granite. At Lowe's, they sell it there. You, I, I get stuff from there instead of ordering something like this. This bag right here, how many pounds? It's 36 pounds. It will cost you as much to, it will cost more. This costs $12. To get this shipped here, UPS, it will cost you $23 per bag. Go to Lowe's and purchase it. It's getting warmer here. And so this is somewhat a summary, come on, my son, uh, of the greenhouse and, and things like this, <clears throat> like this fertilizer for tomatoes here. You that got a few boxes and a few containers, look, we have containers here as well. These containers are used to grow lemongrass. I got lemongrass, and lemongrass does well in a greenhouse. Lemongrass and different herbs and things right here, especially lemongrass, things that grow high. I'll do three in lemongrass and things like that, the Indian lemongrass, that goes well uh, in, in your culinary desire, all right? So this is our small greenhouse. Next year, we're going to have the giant one. That thing is, oh, I would say it's wider than this is long. I would say every bit. That thing is about, that thing is about 50 foot. I would say at least 40 foot, 50 foot wide and about 70 foot long. And then when we get that together, you'll see some tremendous growth. I, I want to show you uh, what has transpired on our seeds we started. I had to replant quite a bit, like I said. 
in this humid weather here, uh, it's hot and you've got to keep a consistent watering. And so you see the beauty of the seeds, they're coming up, the broccoli and the cabbages and the cauliflower. You take a scan down through here, you can see all of that coming up. And so it's wonderful to have this kind of, 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 of you're going to need this in any kind of communal construct. Let no one kid you, all right? You're going to need a position, a, a place where you can grow food during the winter. It's just the simple stuff. You're not trying to grow corn or anything, but things like uh, 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 things like lettuce and many of those things you can grow outside, especially here in this weather here. But there's one beautiful thing about uh, collard greens. I would recommend to any of you all, uh, there are several collard greens that I'm, we're growing this year and also, uh, also the... Um, uh, the uh, uh, cabbages and what are the color greens uh, uh, does well here is called tiger tiger color greens but there are multiple types uh, the Georgia the Vates and all of them but tiger color greens for us they do well they grow large they grow big and also there is a kill called Tronchudo Tronchudo Tronchuda they have it at territorial seed Tron, T-R-U-N-C-H-U-N-D-A, Tron Juda. And it's a very beautiful uh, 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 kale. It grows large. It, you can put it in soups or you can, it, it, it's so many different variations. You can use that. And also there is a, um, what's the name of that color? Uh, it hasn't done well for me and us here, but I'm going to try it again. They grow it here in the southern parts. Uh, or here in, in the south here in Jefferson. My mind is blank concerning the name of it. I know the name of it. Uh, but we grow uh, charming cabbage. It takes about 50 days. And that's a nice little cabbage you can grow. It's sweet, coleslaw, just cooking and sauteing and everything. It will do you well. Look at the, look at the strawberries here. See how they're going? This is a very beautiful morning. Every day is beautiful for us, all right? A beautiful morning the strawberries and all are growing and things like that and uh, and everything is looking well Let, let's go on this side right here I want to show you something now this is what we have on this side right here all right <clears throat> these are <clears throat> this is our it's storage now but this is our solar greenhouse let's go inside for a minute I built this I literally built it by myself but this is a solar greenhouse it's meant for winter growth, and it almost always faces the winter solstice. But I tell you, this thing right here, I'm going to have to come in and refine it. But this thing right here will grow. You can't put a lot in here, but you can grow something this size. It doesn't have to be this large. This is now a junky place. Now we store stuff in here, everything we need. But I tell you, it's one this side right here, this size. It's not a... It's a solar greenhouse. There's a difference between this greenhouse and that greenhouse. You see the wall in installated and it's facing the winter solstice that rises and set in that direction. And it takes full advantage of the sun. And I tell you, it works. But if a family get together or a couple families get together and the men build one like this, it will supply enough food for all of them during the winter time and the winter season. You got to begin to do things to help yourself. I don't beg the white man for a damn thing. You understand? We don't take a damn penny from the white man or any man, the black man, any man. We're not beggars. And there are folks that listen and their homes are blessed. They have never sent a dime. We're not gonna beg. I'm not a beggar. That weed said I've been young and now I'm old. <clears throat> but I've never seen the Sadiq forsaken. Or well, the zero of you out begging for bread, I won't bet. I, I, one of the most prominent politicians here in this area, he liked me. He was a millionaire when he was 33 years old. I said to him one day, um, what's that watch? He said, you don't know what this is? I knew it was a Rolex watch. I'm not impressed with the Rolex watch. I got something on $12 here. It gives me the same time. <clears throat> <clears throat> And he says to me, when I became a millionaire, I said, that, that would be the first thing I'd do. I bought one for me and my wife. You know how much I, this set me back? $25,000. And that was 30, he was 33 years old when he became a millionaire. <clears throat> and so he bought him and his wife a Rolex. And he says to me, preacher, I want to help you. 
I can get you all the money you want. I got right in his face with my nose in his face, and I don't play. I'm not a damn beggar. I said I don't want one damn brown pity. And amazed him, because he's been giving to all these low-life preachers around here. I'm not a beggar. You're not going to get our vote. We're not going to vote for you. Not here. Listen, this right here is wonderful to have. This, These are little beds. You see that they're mulched in straw. This is not hay, but it's straw. It has got layers. Look at this right here. Bring the camera close. You see that? There are leaves right here, mulched leaves. There's straw, and beneath that is a life that is unreal. Earthworms and things like that. They'll just come. You don't have to put them in here. They'll come. And it's so cool here, they go down deep this time of the year, all right? And so that's what we do. This is enough. Look at this. Let me get this out of This is enough of these raised beds. This is enough that we literally, how many toes? One, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You figure 20 totes at 21, we have 25 here. You can grow everything you need right there. You don't have to try, you can't get to the scale we are because it's taken 23 years. Do one little thing at a time, buy one earth box. Mm -hmm. Stop buying the potato chips at Walmart and all of that mess. Buy one earth box at a time, one at a time. And so we have sufficient room <clears throat> We have tremendous garden space that we can grow. And so we don't have to grow like we used to. We grow, over time we will plant 15,000 sweet potato slips. Well, this year we only have how many? We have 2,000 slips out. Well, 2,000 slips, even if there are three sweet potatoes for slips and every kind from the Georgia Jets to the Purples for our friends uh, from Jamaica and all of that, you're going to have more than you can eat. That's eating sweet potatoes every morning, baked sweet potatoes and sweet potato pies. Yeah, we eat that around here, silly one. But this is enough space to do all we need here. And here, things like this, like these garlic chives, they never get old. You see these garlic chives right here? The sisters just don't come over and utilize them. That one tire right there, that'll last a community. And so we put the straw down to inhibit the grass. It's going to grow. You're not going to get rid of every, uh, every uh, root of grass. Don't even try it, all right? And then we used to grow uh, <clears throat> from seeds our own mint. I will start some this year. We will grow our own mint. I will do that again. But let me show you something. You see that right there? You see that? You know what that is? You don't know what it is unless you're from, you're from the Caribbeans. This is lamb's quarters. This grows by the tons around here. It grows everywhere. And it is one of the most wonderful things to eat. Put you some chili pepper in that, and so this is better than collard greens. It's better than collard greens. So we have a supply of growth on the soil here on this line that if we get to a position where we're hungry, if we have nothing but lamb quarter, we don't have to have no goats or cows. We'll go down and throw us a net in. What if we got one pond here? We got a pond that we got a huge pond that we got this water, a pond here that we're getting everything ready to put, put carp fish. If we can find some carp. Listen, you all that fish, and listen to this video. If you do carp fishing, I would love to have about 10. I know that is illegal to bring them in this state, but they're gonna be in our pond. And carp is an edible fish. It's a bottom, bottom dweller, but yet it's an edible fish. It has scales, it has the fins and all. <clears throat> and what, what you can do is, uh, you, you soak that in some buttermilk, cut out that old blood vein. It's a wonderful fish to eat. And I've looked everywhere trying to find some carp fish. And I would love to have about five or six, 10 carps in the pond there. If you live close by me, just, you don't even have to like me. 
you do carp fishing or anything like that, bring me 10 carbs. Bring them here. And I'll put them in a fish cage and keep them until I get the pond ready. We have ponds to eat from, and we're not worried about goats and cows. We have not butchered a cow in so many years we sell them. We're going to butcher one for tabernacle. I'm going to do that because I want to cook nothing but our meat. We have chickens that we butcher. I got, I got a freezer full of chicken that I want to cook and prepare sausages and things. If, if I have the energy, all right? <clears throat> But uh, we wanted to just share that with you, the greenhouse experience. You must, as a nation of people, learn how to feed yourselves and quit eating that trash. Let me say this. <clears throat> if I have to travel a thousand miles, I will never stop at a restaurant. Next weekend, I'm gonna be tra I'm gonna travel a round trip around close to 1,500 miles. I will not stop at one restaurant to eat. I won't stop and get them made up salads. The only thing that I've done in the last, of, I don't know, so many years, I stopped one time at Monday's. I must confess. And I said to the person, I said, ma'am, please, give me a baked potato. Don't even open it up. Just give me the baked potato, conceal in the fall, and I'll go from there. I'm not going to stop and eat it at these restaurants. I went in one the other day that... One of the most, I mean, that McDonald's, I went there to use the facilities. And I walked in the restroom, it was so filthy. I said, Ma, if this how management think of what they think of the restrooms, I can imagine what they think out there when you come in there at that mm -hmm. rush hour, getting that trash. <clears throat> I say this to you. <clears throat> the next video I do is going to be about feeding yourself something that 99.9% .9 of us need to eat regularly. You understand? It will be a surprise. So my friends, uh, my son has to get out and go to work. Uh, until we see you the next time, may the riches of your rest upon you. And your sure mighty name. And also, oh, look at the ants. They have no respect for me. <laughs> They're gonna take my mushroom coffee. Look at them. It hasn't been sitting there for no time. Yes, this is mushroom compost. This mushroom coffee that I ordered, this came from Malaysia. It's for medicinal purposes. I said to my wife one day, I said, how many aspirins have I taken in the 40 plus years we've been married? Uh, or Tylenols, anything. I said, you think I've taken 10? She says, no, because I know I haven't. And I can do things that men that are 20 can't do. I want to show you something. I'm not trying to be boastful. Most young men and women, I used to be able to stand like this with my buttocks against the wall. I'm going to show you what the features are. And I could go all the way down. I don't want to stretch my hands. There are not many people my age can do that. And there are not many people that can do what I do at my age. Well, you're fat and big belly. Oh, I know. I'm a big man. I'm not small like him in his, in his size, anything like that. I'm just big. My father was a huge man. You'll understand that on the ship, but I'm a big man. I am. But I can get it done. I tell you, little man, I come, I work better than you and do things you can't do, all right? Yeah. So there is something we need to feed ourselves and make sure we take care of ourselves. I've, I haven't gone to a doctor in nearly 40 years. And when I went that time, I had the strep throat. <clears throat> and they wanted to give me a shot, told me to pull. But the woman said, pull your pants down. I said, what? But it's she's me, but my wife, lady. No. I said, give me a prescription. I went to the pharmaceutical pharmacist, filled the prescription. I took two pills. No. I let my body, my temperature, 103, 102. I let my body battle with that. Mm -hmm. And I came through. I went to the islands. I got so sick in Jamaica because I wanted to patronize the food there. And I went in this place and I ate. I didn't eat it all, but I ate enough. I ate some curry goat there. You can tell it had been saved for days in the refrigeration. I wanted to patronize the people. I could have gone to the finest of restaurants. Yes, the finest of restaurants, what the world called fire. And I got so sick, it was, I, I was sick for two weeks when I got back. I was sick, I mean, 
sick. I never went to a doctor. I don't know, food pause and whatever. But I'm never going to a doctor anything like that. I don't do that. That's just me. That's just my hardcore belief. And that's the way I trust you all That's me. And you can't change that. And nobody's going to tell me you need to go check. I, I, no, no, y'all checks on me. And I don't need no faggot man with his faggot hands filling on me and telling me to drop my... No, I'm not going to do that. Are you afraid? No, I'm not afraid. I just have confidence and faith. And y'all, you can. But don't tell me to do it, all right? Y'all has given us one of the most powerful healing mechanisms. We just obey him. He sends his word to show me your wicked man that you yeah. You're unclean, you're violent. Mm -hmm. He shows me that. Yes. Change your ways. And I allow the power of that truth to change my ways, my friend. And he has kept me in excellent shape. It doesn't take me long to get back into vitality. I can lay off two or three months and I can go back. It's in my DNA. I'm going to, the next video, I am going to show you one of the most important things you all must eat every day in some form, in some way. I got an old mother here. She's 70, what, five, 76 years old? She's been with me for who, 30, 30, 30 some years. And she gets out every morning, every evening, and she's old. And she walks, and she walks, and she works, and she walks. Some of your mothers don't do anything. You lay on your backside watching as the world turns, as a whore laid down another trick. That's evil. You shouldn't watch that kind of trick. Yeah, it's evil. And you that go to these movie houses, one of the most diametrical, diabolical scheme of hell, whereby you go and let liars infuse emotions in you. You cry in that shit. I say it that way. It's shit. These are the synagogues of hell. The Black Panther. Isn't that some silly bullshit? And people have gone two or three times to see it. Bullshit. That's right. I know the lion. I know the Eri of Yahuda. Yabaru. Shalom.